Okay, hi there. Welcome to a series of five short videos focusing on key labour market diagrams. Uh, the idea behind this set of videos is to think about just ideas for developing a diagram in an exam so that you get higher marks for knowledge, uh, application and analysis. And of course, if you can get the analysis to a good level, it's often the case that the evaluation uh, flows a little bit more easily. So I'm going to take you through some diagrams. Uh, we'll look at wage differentials in this one. Then we'll look at uh, minimum wages, labour migration, trade unions and zero hour contracts. So five aspects of labour markets each time just using supply and demand analysis, hopefully to good effect. So when we think about the labour market, we normally, of course, of course, put the wage rate on the y axis, wage rate per hour, for example, and on the x axis, employment, how many people are employed by a business. The demand for labour comes from employers, employing people for the output that they're, of goods and services they're producing. The supply of labour, of course, comes from individuals supplying themselves either at a micro level, but in this case, we'll be looking at the occupational supply of labour to particular jobs. So how do we use simple labour demand and supply diagrams to explain wage differentials, the big gaps in pay between different jobs? Well, I think when I think about, uh, in particular, relatively low paid jobs, I start with the idea that the labour supply to many of these occupations is fairly elastic at a, at a relatively low wage. In other words, there's a, a quite a big potential pool of labour that could move into a particular occupation uh, without the wage having to be bidded up uh, a great extent by the employer. So I've drawn here a labour supply is fairly elastic. And I've also drawn my labour demand curve as relatively elastic. Now, some of you will have uh, built the labour demand curve using what's called marginal revenue product theory. Essentially, that's the, the revenue from the output of employing extra workers. I, I won't say too much about MRPL in this video, but the labour demand, curve, labour demand curve I've drawn here is fairly wage elastic, suggesting that as wages go up, as we move up the y-axis, uh, the employer is uh, quite sensitive to that in terms of how many people they're willing and able to employ. So the equilibrium wage, well, the equilibrium level of employment, first of all, is E1 uh, at a wage rate, an average wage rate of W1. So low pay in the labour market is often the result of a combination of elastic labour supply and fairly elastic labour demand. Relatively low wage jobs tend, not always, but tend to have a highly elastic labour supply and elastic labour demand at a low prevailing wage rate. Uh, the barriers to entry, the hurdles to breaking into these occupations are relatively low. Uh, perhaps they are jobs that don't require innate scarce skills or very high level educational qualifications. And as a result, there is a large pool of potential people able to take these jobs without the firm, the employer, the business having to bid up the going wage significantly. Uh, so that's the situation with kind of low paid jobs. Uh, and uh, this is the data on the lowest paid jobs in the UK in 2021. This is median full-time gross weekly pay. And you can see that bar staff on average, uh, sorry, the median pay, not the mean, the, the median was £302 a week for full-time work. Smiths and forge workers, people working in food and hospitality, waiters and waitresses, leisure and theme park attendants and so on. People working in beauticians, related occupations, things like nail salons catering assistants, people working in for playgroups and things, elementary schools, cleaners, etc. So these are the jobs in the labour market in the UK that pay the lowest gross weekly pay. If you contrast that data with this data, this is at the top of the labour scale. This is the, the median full-time earnings of the highest paid occupations in the UK in 2021. Obviously, this is the median pay, the middle value of the, of the distribution, so chief executives on average, sorry, not the median pay, 80,000. Clearly, many get paid well more than that. Legal professionals, IT, telecommunications, etc., senior police officers. And at the top, they're train and tram drivers, often relatively well paid. I think in part, the result of high rates of unionisation in an industry. And I think when it comes to high pay, what you typically would use in your diagrams, keep it nice and simple, is the idea that the labour supply curve to those occupations tends to be wage inelastic, that uh, there might be particular shortages of skilled labour. It's not easy for firms to attract extra workers when they need them. The wage might have to be bidded up 
and also that the labour demand curve is also relatively wage inelastic. Perhaps these workers are important to the production process. They add value to the output of goods and services and firms are reluctant to replace these workers with, for example, capital machinery or automation. That combination of a low elasticity of demand and supply of labour drives up the, if you like, the equilibrium wage for these occupations. Now, in our second video, we'll be using labour market diagrams again to show the effects of a minimum wage.